Hello, Vanessa. Uh, Hello. Thank you for being here with us uh, in this online event uh, in which we will talk about uh, abortion rights, women, reproductive rights and health crisis in neoliberalism. Okay, so Vanessa, uh, first of all, uh, can you briefly describe the political, historical, social and religious background of uh, legal frameworks, reactionary reforms on women's reproductive rights in Italy? Yes, so um, thank you very much for having me here uh, in this event. And um, to say, um, to start, uh, so as everybody knows, Italy is a Catholic country. Uh, we have uh, uh, an abortion law since uh, uh, the 70s. Uh, the abortion law, um, I think, was voted uh, in uh, 1974. And uh, after a long, um, um, after uh, a very uh, long fight of uh, feminist movement uh, in the uh, in the seventies, and uh, uh, the problem of uh, this abortion law um, was that since the beginning we have. Uh, um, a possibility for doctors to um, decide, even if they are a doctor working on women's health, they can decide if they want to practice an abortion or not. Um, and uh, by now, we have uh, regions in Italy who have the 90% of doctors in the public hospitals who decided to not practicing abortion. That means that in many places of Italy at the moment is uh, very, very difficult to have an abortion. Even though uh, abortion is, is legal. Yes, of course, abortion is legal since the 70s, uh, absolutely. Abortion, it has uh, always been legal uh, since uh, the law has passed uh, and uh, um, there is no intention to touch uh, openly the law. Rather, even during the uh, Salvini gov when Salvini was a uh, minister, uh, minister of uh, uh, interior, uh, that was the moment uh, where uh, there has been, the the, um, uh, the moment where uh, we had uh, uh, a lot of um, um, demonstrations or uh, yeah, no, we had a lot of attack from the government oh. towards uh, uh, women and uh, women reproductive rights. Uh, but even in that period uh, that was openly the, when uh, the government was openly going against uh, um, uh, women rights, uh, the uh, uh, idea to return back uh, uh, from legal abortion were never openly discussed. But what is true is uh, that abortion uh, reproductive rights in Italy are in practice uh, in danger because uh, hospital by hospital, we have uh, the impossibility, uh, like doctors are not practicing abortion because they openly uh, say that is against uh, their moral beliefs. And that, uh, that means that, yes, we do have a law, but inside the law that was voted in the 70s, we have the trick to, uh, to make the law um, not, uh, uh, to make the, this right uh, um, not um, real. Um, so, uh, especially in the last uh, years, with the explosion of the feminist movement, uh, non una di meno, not one less. Uh, there have been uh, public campaigns uh, against uh, the possibility of doctors uh, um, to, um, to practice what in Italian we call obiezione di coscienza. So like 
uh, um, the possibility to, for a moral or religious belief to not practice abortion. This has always been um, um, one of the objective of uh, the campaign historically and also lately of a feminist movement uh, in Italy. Second thing, yeah. um, uh, another um, campaign and battle of feminist movement uh, uh, lately had to, uh, to claim back reproductive rights has been on the appeals of the day after. So um, this, is of, uh, this is legal, of course, uh, in Italy, but also here is restricted. Uh, if we compare uh, uh, to France or Spain, where you can simply go to a pharmacy and ask for the pills, uh, um, this is not uh, possible in Italy. You need to have a prescription of a doctor, and uh, this makes um, uh, the... Uh, this makes uh, the eater of uh, having uh, the pills uh, very long sometimes uh, and sometimes uh, pharmacy would not sell you the pills uh, saying that they don't have it and for moral for moral uh, rights for um, uh, moral behavior uh, and uh, but this is not possible this is not legal so uh, one of the um, very um, successful campaign that have been done is uh, organized up around a platform and a, a group that is called the Obiezione Respinta. So we reject your objection. And uh, it's a, an online platform where you can uh, um, uh, where uh, you can um, send um, and map online uh, all the, the pharmacy and doctors and hospitals where you have been um, uh, where a doctor has told you uh, we're not practicing abortion or we're not selling the pills uh, a pharmacy that has uh, told you that we are uh, no we are not selling the pills so after uh, receiving um, uh, these um, online um, um, uh, these online comments, uh, uh, sometimes it, is, it has happened that feminist groups and uh, non una di meno assemblies have also organized uh, small action in front of pharmacies that have decided to not sell, uh, to not selling the pills. Because that's it's completely against the law, they cannot do it. Yeah. So we use the law, uh, so since they, they are forcing the law, we are using the, we are saying no, we, we are right. We, this is our right, you have to sell it to us. Um, but as you know, many times uh, um, for young uh, teenagers uh, or uh, yes, young women, it's difficult uh, to um, be in this situation when you are alone in front of a doctor, maybe a male doctor that in a pharmacy is telling you, no, we're not selling this pill. And maybe then it's too late. You are, yeah. up, that can happen after three days. So this has been, um, so, uh, so at the moment uh, we have, um, um, we have the right, we are um, lately, uh, is it possible to not to, um, to receive the pills directly from the pharmacy as well. So the, the fact that you need an authorization from your doctor has been uh, removed. So that was a successful campaign as well. Uh, but still, we have a lot of lot of pharmacies where you go and they will not sell it to you. But, um, While being against the law. Yes, totally. Exactly. And I think that the day after pill isn't free. It, no. It's a, is it expensive? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is kind of expensive, and it's not. Uh, they will not uh, um, refund it uh, later. So uh, you so have to wait for yourself. So women from lower uh, classes, uh, from the lower class, won't be able, uh, aren't able to pay for it. Yeah, well, I mean, we are talking about 20, 30 euros, kind of. Uh, but oh. yes, of course, it's not refunded. Definitely not. Um, and the third uh, um, problematic issues uh, issues on which uh, women reproductive rights have been uh, restricted is uh, the um, uh, possibility to have an abortion through the appeals. So the RU um, 
486. And uh, as well, in many other European countries, uh, uh, the UK, France, I think Spain as well, uh, Germany, is it po uh, um, this is the normal way now to have an abortion. So you have an abortion through the pills that is much less uh, uh, invasive on uh, the women body. And um, in Italy, this has been experimental in few regions uh, for many, many years. And one of the uh, campaign of the last decade for 10 years, we have been campaigning because uh, the pills needs to be um, the main uh, um, the main way to practice an abortion. And uh, it needs to be done in um, uh, local clinics, uh, local public clinics uh, that are women clinics that you can find uh, um, in the um, that are called uh, consultori. Uh, so that is uh, women uh, women local clinics um, um, of, uh, that were um, uh, a success campaign in the, about uh, of the feminist movement after the seventies. And uh, we ask that the abortion is practiced there through the uh, RU486. And uh, lately, I think two weeks, two months uh, ago, uh, no, maybe uh, something more than, I think before the summer, sorry, the minister has uh, decided uh, um, for new rules on the use of the pills. And it has accepted uh, that the pills, that abortion can be done uh, through the RU486. So, uh, but you have to, um, health, um, the health system in Italy is national, but is organized uh, regionally. So many regions have, have started to um, set up new rules to avoid to have uh, these uh, um to avoid to have um to implement this decision because they don't want to have it because that will help uh, women to have abortion in an easier way rather than go to the hospital where you can find association that will stop you and blah 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 blah, blah. so and um so so the oh, the the this even though we got these first um, uh, new rules from the minister ministry, the implementation regional uh, the uh, regional implementation of these rules, it's a, a fight region by region, uh, uh, regional government for a regional government, uh, and this is uh, so it is uh, it, it always looks like move uh, like movements are you gain something but then it's taken back so. You can never say yes. We got it. Uh, it's done. So yeah. it's always an open. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's always an open fight. Yeah, it's a constant fight because if the ministry gives you a right, the regions block it. Exactly. Yeah, that was that was a, a mind blowing because I didn't know the situation in Italy. Um, so next question is, uh, how can we measure the social and gendered impact of the promotion of a highly restrictive legislation on women's reproductive uh, and abortion rights? So how can we measure? Now, I would say um, after this long conversation about uh, abortion, uh, pill, um, abortion pills uh, and uh, pills of the day after, we didn't talk uh, about like, um, uh, but the fact that in Italy, condom and the pills, uh, um, the, the, the pills are, you, we have to pay for it. Um, mm. Condom are super expensive. I think it's one of, uh, uh, we get uh, the VAT uh, taxes on condom, um as uh, higher on uh, as in any, any other uh, uh, object and um and this this affects a lot uh, the uh, reproductive rights for example I, we think uh, pills and condom should be for free and uh, and this is 
mm, this is not even on the table of the discussion, for example. But all the discussion about right, reproductive uh, rights, health rights, these are health rights, yeah. they are not simply women rights. These are uh, health rights affecting the entire society. This is quite important uh, point. And on the other hand, the fight of women on, on their reproductive rights that is affecting their own body has meant in the years and decades um, a reconstruction and um, a, a take back of the relation between health and society body and uh, and um, uh, the knowledge on the body of our own body so it, it has meant health and society but as well like uh, the person uh, the own the thing the individual person and its own body has opened up a new way of knowing about ourselves and uh, an, an, a new way of uh, relation with uh, science reproductive science and health and I think today this is telling us something in, very important uh, in this moment of pandemic. <laughs> uh, so I think the feminist movement has a lot uh, to tell us about the relation between uh, health and uh, society and the body and the well-being mm? and knowing our own body, uh, reclaiming our own body, reclaiming the knowledge on our body. That doesn't mean so to be reductionist, uh, it doesn't mean to be to neglect the existence of uh, 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 of illness, uh, but it means to um, to uh, to claim the knowledge uh, on our body like women have uh, for a long for a long time um, we know that the reproductive system of women was not studied yeah. the names of the reproductive system of uh, uh, of the women were all were all uh, studied only by mail we only had the male names uh, and uh, and so much is uh, still uh, uh, to know and only in the moment when women movements have started to claim back that knowledge and to say this is not true you have no idea what you're talking about i know it because this is my body uh, it's a, a new way of knowing ourselves has started yeah and it's the fight for uh, self-determination and uh, women's uh, rights and the uh, famous uh, quote, uh, no uterus, no opinion. Um, I think it's, uh, it has a lot to say about uh, the male dominant uh, place of uh, the main dominant domain uh, of uh, medicine. And uh, about, uh, uh, about that, um, how do you, why do you think uh, women's rights are so heavily attacked in the context of global health and social crisis? So the attack on women's rights has started before the health crisis. So we, it has uh, erupted uh, maybe like three, four years ago uh, when we had right this new neo-authoritarian uh, moment. Um, with so with the election of Trump, uh, uh, the election of Bolsonaro, uh, the election of uh, so Salvini, for example, in uh, government in Italy, or um, but that was the explosion. We know that um, this attack was going on, maybe more quietly, uh, but it was going on since years and years already. At the basis of, um, I think Polish women have told us a lot. Um, they have been probably the first uh, movement uh, against uh, this new authoritarian wave uh, that we have witnessed uh, in Europe and in, in the entire world. Um, they are like really at the front line of fighting against uh, a new um, fascism, if we want to call it, but uh, a and new so far they're successful. And so far, very successful. Uh, the and they have been very successful. 
and uh, they have been the only successful movement uh, uh, in this uh, on that case and uh, and i think it's not a case that uh, we, a women uh, a feminist movement has been so successful in the east of europe maybe the only uh, successful movement against uh, this neo authoritarian government mm -hmm. uh, both uh, the the attack on women bodies and uh, on women rights uh, was um, going on since um, a long time and i i think is uh, strictly related with the uprising of the new rights of a new uh, emerging uh, uh, rights of new emerging uh, neo uh, new, I'll call it neo authoritarian authoritarian <laughs> um, governments around uh, around the world. Um, I do believe it's not a case that we see a lot of uh, 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 male uh, prime male macho prime minister attacking directly women reproductive rights, saying that women need to go back home somehow yeah um and uh this goes hands in hands uh, with what um with a neoliberal idea of women instead where that um women from being um in the neoliberal idea women are not in the at least white women are not in the house anymore but they are uh, women able to work and uh, to be uh, mother and to be cleaner and to be caring so women in the neoliberal uh, uh, system are like super women able to do everything but once we are started to witness a moment of uh, unemployment uh, after the financial crisis uh, uh, unemployment has raised everywhere uh, many um, many industrial um, uh, many industries uh, will not recover in Europe anymore. We know it. There is no possibility we will have mm. uh, a recovery. Uh, and this was after the financial crisis. After ten years, uh, after few years of the financial crisis, we have started to see an attack on women's rights even before the uh, election of uh, ex uh, right uh, government then we had the election of the right uh, of uh, right wing extra, uh, extreme uh, right wing government and the attack was even harder um so so the financial the financial crisis uh, started a domino uh, that would affect uh, that would affect uh, women's rights and women's reproductive rights in order to uh in order for for women to be in uh, in the house and uh, playing uh playing the part of the caring mother who uh, listens to the husband and obeys to the husband yes and obeys to the state as well yeah and <laughs> and obeys uh, and when she doesn't want to obey um well that's the moment of violence so what we see is not simply an attack of women reproductive reproductive rights uh, what we see is uh, a new uh way of uh, um, uh women uh, violence against women and um so the um, uh, feminist movement uh, in italy uh, but also in south america has um uh, has started uh, especially against the, the outbreak of femicide so um mm -hmm. five years ago now um because uh, the, 20, the five years ago now in italy there was this uh, um incredibly brutal uh, um, femicide of a woman in the outskirt of Rome. She was burned alive by his ex-boyfriend because she just didn't want to go back with him. And, um, and after that uh, femicide, uh, um, a, a group of women went on the place uh, with a banner sent uh, with written not one less hmm? not one less women killed by in this way by a man 
And uh, after that, there was uh, we called for a uh, we called for a national demonstration, and uh, it turned out to be one of the biggest uh, national demonstration in the last maybe decade, and that was the starting point of uh, uh, of the feminist movement. That now it's called uh, non una di meno, not one less, and. Um, and from um, we have uh, written a um, common uh, uh, a manifesto uh, where uh, we um, explain what is it violence against women nowadays, and it's not simply uh, the violence of uh, about um, that is expressed in killing women, but is a violence that is economic, is social, is a is a, a structural violence that is uh, in our daily life uh, since the beginning of the morning when we take a bus. So, uh, not in this moment, we can't really take buses at the moment. <laughs> uh, and um, or we just walk in the streets and we receive uh, comments every day, comments on our, on our body, comments on what we do, comments on uh, whatever it is. And, uh, and then uh, we are less paid, uh, we study more, but we find less um, uh, less uh, jobs, uh, we are, le as, as I said, uh, we are less paid, and we, uh, and it's quite uh, possible that in our labor, um, that in our um, workplace, uh, we can uh, be harassed. So, violence in the house and harassment in the public space, this is the reality of uh, women's life, and it's not an exception. This yeah. is a structural reality, this is a daily life of the women the daily life of the, of the women in all over the world yes exactly um, and uh, not only women here uh, as I, and all the time I'm, I'm speaking about uh women i want to uh say like about ev every uh, person who behave or wants to be or is it uh, feels a woman right every femininity not simply a biological question yeah, uh, every femininity uh, receives the the uh, kind of the same uh, the same reaction uh, from the macho and heteronormative uh, cis male uh, dominance, uh, exactly. if you want. And during the pandemic, uh, did uh, did you notice? Uh, was there an increase of uh, violence against women and uh, femicides? Yes. Yes, there was a, a, a very big uh, um, increase of um, violence and femicide. Uh, so uh, we had uh, in um, so we had three months of uh, lock, uh, very strict lockdown, March, April, and May, and uh, we had uh, almost forty-four women were killed, one every two days, um, and. Um, you, uh, and uh, by now there are 60 women killed in 2020 and um, generally in Italy uh, since I think more than a decade uh, um, the killing, uh, normal killing are going down, yeah. only femicides are going up. So it's quite important and um, it's quite relevant also to say that uh, um, it's only, it's not even 20 years that we are counting and we are co defining a femicide. So the ISTAT, the National Statistical uh, uh, Agency, is counting a femicide only since uh, the beginning of 2000. And, um, and so it's in the public discussion really, not since uh, so long. Uh, and it's getting worse uh, year after year. And I think the the lockdown is uh, has really um, affected this situation. And uh, violent uh, um, anti violence center have received much more calls, uh, but have been able to do much less because they were. It was difficult, of course, for the situation to support to fully support women. Plus. Uh, anti-violence centers are uh, underfunded. So many of them in the last years have closed. Uh, the cutting of public fundings has been enormous on these um, uh, on these centers, and uh, as much as on uh, ter territorial uh, uh, medicine and the health cares and local health cares, as we 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 know now uh, even more with the pandemic. Yeah. Um, 
and this has affected women in a disproportional manner and um yeah so in the pandemic uh women's uh, access to reproductive health services are affected as as you just described yes even more um so during the lockdown it was really hard to have an abortion we uh, with non una dimino we have realized uh, um uh, some uh, uh, infographics uh, that were shown how difficult it was to receive an abortion. And for this reason, uh, many women had to go through the um, um, uh, exceptional pro uh, procedure um, mm. to be in the time of for abortion. So you can have an abortion only for uh, in the first uh, 12 uh, weeks i don't want to be um uh, i hope it's uh, correct uh, but um and uh, it is better to have it uh, uh, as soon as possible but during the pandemic it was almost impossible and the majority of the abortion has been done in the last weeks of possibility so this tell us that it was really restrictive, uh, restricted the possibility for women to have an abortion. So just in these days, uh, because the 25th of November is um, the international uh, uh, day, uh, the international day um, for um, male mm -hmm. violence against women, yeah. we are we have realized another infographic on uh, what to do when you have an abortion, and they tell you it's not possible because a lot of hospitals. Uh, uh have uh will tell you no we are covid hospital we cannot we are not practicing abortion anymore so we have uh, numbers that you can call uh to know where to go as soon as possible so that, that's a great project um and lastly um are there any successful feminist strategy strategies and what can we learn from each other uh from the feminist movement in Italy. What can uh, what can we learn from the feminist movement in Italy here in Greece? Yeah, so I think like talking uh, have already like um, um, told uh, some of the campaigns uh, that have uh, went uh, on. I think during the pandemic was really hard, and also like to organize to get organized, and um, uh, and uh, also now like uh, for these. Um, 25 of 25th of November. Um, for us in Italy, it used to be like very in the last four years, at least uh, since the beginning of Nonuna di Meno, it used to be our May. Uh, we used to organize the national demonstration, and of course, uh, today is not possible. Half of Italy is already in, in, in lockdown, so strict lockdown again, and mm. half of Italy is not. So each uh, local assemblies organize actions where um, where they can, and uh, and of course is organizing online. Uh, and um, but of course it, it is difficult to to organize in this moment. And uh, but uh, what we we have tried to do um, well, especially to map the possible so uh, uh, against uh, the question of specifically on the question of reproductive rights and this um, um, have access to abortion and other and the other uh, uh, pills and so on uh, to map the the possible uh, and to map where you can go uh, to have access easily uh, to have numbers to call where you can have a, a service managed by feminist feminist activists that will support you, feminist doctors uh, that will support you, feminist gynecologists, nurses uh, that uh, uh, will support you. Because we have to remember that reproductive rights then are something that uh, are affecting the, like seriously our daily life uh, and, that, uh, and that we need them. Um, so that was, I think, uh, a very a very productive way of um, supporting women yeah okay uh, the the information that we, we can give uh, to other women where they can go to uh, 
to have a safe and a safe abortion. Yes, safe abortion where they can go, uh, which doctor, which agency, which hospitals, uh, map also, for example, the pharmacy that will not give you the pills and go and say, no, you cannot be, um, give uh, good, uh, uh, be clear on uh, what is possible and what is not. Because many, many doctors here and many hospitals uh, are, um, are doing things that they cannot do. Because we, we have laws and we have, right, and we have uh, laws that uh, so it is important to know uh, which are your rights. Yeah. Uh, and this has been probably one of the most uh, important uh, also. This is, this is very important to know when you go in a hospital, to know when you go in a, towards a doctor, to know which are your rights. And plus, another thing is to know your body, like to know what are you asking for, to know what does it mean to reproductive rights. And as I said, it's not a question only of reproductive rights. It's a question of rights about our body, about the health of our body. And this is affected. Uh, um, and so to know about pleasure, to know about uh, what you want, uh, what is consensus, what is not. These are all things that um, can, be, can be done and can be also done now uh, online. We can yes, see because this movie campaign online. Feminist projects online right now are the main way in order to inform women and men and everybody uh, about uh, their their rights and their reproductive rights and the uh, and their self determination. Yes, exactly. We Thank you. That I think this is the point. Uh, self determination on your body, like this is probably, uh, and I think I, I, uh, as I know, all the feminist movements around the world are working on that, because yeah. this is probably the most important things. Like to know, um, to know your body, to know your rights, uh, to know how to um, uh, determine yourself. Yes, determine yourself. Thank you. And to support each other in this moment as well. More, it's not simply informing others, but is uh, as well uh, to create space uh, where uh, we can uh, meet, even if it's just uh, online or maybe uh, in, um, it is uh, outside, uh, but uh, uh, keeping um, uh, the distance uh, and with all uh, the necessary um security measures but at the same time um to create space uh, of connection yes yeah, a safe space in order to be ourselves and support each other in this uh, patriarchal society it's more than needed <laughs> so uh vanessa i think we're about to uh finish thank you for this uh, interesting conversation I'd like to make some uh, comments. Um, we live in a patriar patriarchal society uh, where women and femininities are constantly under attack by the state and cis male heteronormative subjects. And in this world, we see feminist movements fight back. In Chile, uh, for more than a year of the anti-government uh, protests, people had openly expressed the the need of gender equality in Mexico, as you said before, uh, where femicides increased during the last years, we see the feminist movement uh, demonstra demonstrating while being heavily attacked by the police. Uh, we also can't forget and didn't forget the Poland people reaction and the pro-choice demonstration uh, demonstrations when the government with the church's blessings, of course, uh, try to establish an anti-abortion bill. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, the government believed that uh, it could decide for women's uh, bodies without being bothered, but the people in Poland showed that their freedom of choice and self-determination can't be contained. Uh, we also uh, had some feminist wins in Greece uh, in, 19, uh, in 2019 the feminist movement uh, managed to force the government to establish a law uh, where only the absence of uh, consent is the 
constituent element of rape. Although we are forced to live in a society where every day we come up against patriarchal uh, ideas and practices, we will, keep, we will keep fighting for a better world, uh, for a world that everybody is free to express their true selves, for a world without sexism, homophobia, transphobia, uh, racism, and social divide. Uh, the only world we want to live in is a world without patriarchy and capitalism, and so our feminist action goes hand in hand with our anti-capitalist struggle. Um, Vanessa, I want to thank you uh, again. Uh, it was a very interesting conversation we had and... Uh, and I just need to say something because I, I said that we have abortion law since 1974, but it's 1978. So oh. <laughs> just to be precise. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, thank you. And thank you. I hope we meet again uh, yes. to organize something. Uh...